76. 76. That's second gen. I'm, I, yeah, I love 76. the. Uh, I love the first gen. I have yeah, a, when I was a young man, I remember I had a customer. I was just a school kid, and a man had a, a 454 SS71. Wow, this is beautiful. All original? Yes, it's got uh, 28,000 miles on it now. I got to change that sign. All right. 28,000 actual documented miles. That is awesome. It had 14 on it when I got it in 2008, but a lot of things had deteriorated from sitting around. So the gaskets and seals and yeah. taking the fuel tank out, a lot of things like that were in order. The uh, fuel lines that don't withstand any alcohol blended fuels. Fortunately, in Lincoln County, where I live, I can now buy pump gas that contains no alcohol, and the car runs much better on real gasoline instead of 10% methanol fuels. Oh, this is beautiful. It's some kind of. It's got its nicks and dings, but I'm not afraid to drive the thing. That's uh, you know when it's too nice, people. you're afraid to drive it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I mean this guy shopping cart. The guy got this is shopping cart. Hit this quarter panel, and this is a hokey looking repair job. But I didn't do it. The, the seniors that own this car did. I mean, you know it's you know it was a it was somebody's daily car. They they just didn't drive. She passed away in 1992, and um and the, and so yeah, it's a. Uh, it could use a, a it could use a few upgrades here and there, but oh, this is it's, awesome! It's not too shabby. It's not too. I mean, I got a little work. I could use some improvements on that trim. Need to be restained. It's not really a pain. It's a dye, but that, that's faded through. That's aluminum trim around there. That's. Beautiful so car. I, I had drove it to Decatur, Illinois, and I'll take one of the original Landau wheels and cars, and I'll take that tire. I can carry a real spare if I go any long distance. Right. <laughs> now I put them tires on. And I bought the car in 2008 and put them wheels and tires on. Man, and I, I love the rally. 2009. Yeah, my brother-in-law bought a new Corvette in 1978, and well, he still owns it. And, and I like the way an eight-inch wheel looked on the Corvette, so that inspired me to get the eight-inch on this. Absolutely. Even though the uh, and when I went, I was all over Craigslist and car magazines trying to find side of rallies, but since they haven't made any new ones, GM wheels since 1979, you can't find a set of them that's all uniform or not bent. You yeah, know? absolutely. And you don't want us buy some from a guy and they ship them to you and then you got a bent wheel this is just not worth it i, so I get I that buying them new would be even though the reproduction i you know was cool for the looks and not the original right not original and, and they um because eight inch weren't an option but seven inch ones are an option i got some factory gm brochures in the in the back of the car which is an interesting story in itself <laughs> I have a good friend, and we gave we got to be good friends, just like you meet people at these car events and right. become friends. And he seen my Monte Carlo one day and says, "Would you like to get have a fa original GM brochure for that car?" And I go, "Yeah, that'd be great to display it." Right. He said, "Well, what happened is I had a, a I had a friend, and all he did all his life." Even since he was a kid, would ride his bicycle to car dealers and get their brochures, <laughs> and they would roll their eyes. And the keys, the kid on the bike that comes in and pinches the car brochures, and he saved them. And he goes, and and it, me and him were best pals all through our teen years and younger years. And he's my age now. He's a diesel mechanic and he just retired recently. And he goes, uh, and uh. Sadly, he had health issues and passed away in his 50s. And uh, and I still see his mother regularly and visit her. And she was throwing away all these car brochures. And I said, oh, don't do that. I'll, I'll put them on the internet and sell them. Yeah. And so when he gave me the brochures, this, oh, wow. the factory, this is not a re this GM, I got a couple of them. Um, I said, you let that lady know. And I got the brochures from him. How... What her son did as a hobby can now be his legacy and tell her how happy I am yeah, to be able absolutely. to display this with my car when I display it at car shows now. People 
can see the options that were available on 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 their new Monte Carlo. So um, it's interesting that shows the equipment and what kind of options were available. And so I said, you just be sure and next time you visit her how how awesome it is that that man he still got quite a binder of various manufacturers of brand new car brochures for all the years that that young that, that man would collect those car brochures so that's that's cool that's definitely amazing yeah i just definitely. i just bought a 77 with this interior in it it's pretty nice see this lever right here uh -huh. wow i now this one is a bench seat and the lever's behind i see i just noticed that the 77 i bought's got this type of seat in it that's called the split bench and that's the swivel buckets I do got swivel buckets and a floor console and a steering column that's tilt wheel without that gear shift part on it. Right. I bought a junk Monte Carlo just for those three pieces because raggedy seats are 200 if you find them and they're missing all the stuff like the knobs and the plastic trim covers. Of course, they have to be reupholstered. You can have about 1,200 in them seats if you want to get them reupholstered. Yeah. Well, you know, you know how. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can. <laughs> <laughs> no stranger just spending money on these damn cars. Yeah. Oh, this is. So it's, it's like I say, I, I, I don't drive it a lot, but I like, you know, George and me have been friends a good while, and uh, I, I thought it would be a good day to come out. Uh, we had a lot of flooding in Lincoln County up there this spring, so the car didn't go to many car shows this year, but today maybe maybe in the garage the rest of the winter. Not yeah. Well, we definitely got blessed with the weather today, yeah. so I'm yeah, glad you pulled out the survivor. Going out there. Yeah, there's a, you know I got I'm gonna try to figure out how to get some of the rust off these fasteners and stuff. Like this little stuff. That demerits the car that car shows, but it also shows it's original. Right. Very cool. I did cover this up a little. Yeah, I, I put all gaskets and seals and stuff in the engine, and this in, in the air conditioner compressor, I resealed it. I resealed that VIR valve over there. Got all them snap-on tools that hadn't, where I work hadn't been used in 20 years. You know, them guys I work with just... I'll just buy a compressor for it. I go, man, that's got that original decal on it. It shows all the charge and everything on it. I said, in the day, you ain't no mechanic if you can't reseal an AC compressor with the right tools, you know. And uh, the the um, the replacement ones now are aluminum made in China compressors. They look kind of cheap and chintzy. That thing weighs about 30 pounds. They develop that in the 1950s. Heck, they run forever if they don't ever run low on oil. I mean, they may leak. They mechanically last forever. That that compressor is actually made by Frigidaire. Yeah.